Hi again, um, my name is Ellen Tao and I'm Psychology's Eco Living Editor and because today is World Oceans Day I'm hosting these videos all day for Psychologies for World Oceans Day and we've been chatting to a great lineup of experts, authors and brands who are helping to protect our oceans and next up we've got Maduri who's the project leader at Beat the Microbead and Beat the Microbead is a campaign against microplastics and it's led by the Plastic Soup Foundation so hopefully she should be requesting to join us any second now um, coming up later we've also got Ella who's a campaigner against plastic period products and to find more sustainable products in all of our supermarkets she's amazing as well so we have just got our request, I just add her. Hi to everybody who's joining, it's great to see loads of people joining on. Okay, um, she has declined, so hopefully we'll get another request in a minute. Um, so we're gonna be talking about microplastics, which are those tiny plastics that can be found in products. They can be hidden. So hopefully she should be joining again now. Hi, everybody. Hello. And there we go. Hi. How are you doing? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? Good. Happy World's Ocean Day. Thank you. You too. <laughs> um, so to start, do you want to tell everybody a bit about the Beat the Microbead campaign and what that actually is, and also why it's so important to World Oceans Day in particular? Yeah, sure. Um, so Beat the Microbead campaign, uh, we started it in 2012 already. It's a campaign against plastic ingredients, uh, which are put in in your uh, shampoos, personal care products, and all kinds of uh, cosmetics, basically. And... Uh, we started with uh, beat, which was initially quite well, the problem. Uh, but later, with more research, we figured out that there are so much more uh, put into our plastic, our cosmetics uh, than just microbeads. So the main issue with uh, this is that every time you shower or brush your teeth, uh, you are not realizing that all this material is going down the drain and the wastewater treatment plant filter it so they enter directly our waterways our, uh, oceans rivers and the most uh, disturbing thing is, uh, microplastics is a kind of pollution that's almost impossible to clean so mm -hmm. it's if damage is done it's done so that's that's the more urgent uh yeah thing about the pollution yeah. And I think it's something that often people don't realise, you know, they can see a physical plastic bottle, but they might not realise that there's the smaller particles within it. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously in 2018, the UK banned microbeads. So how comes this is still a problem and we still need to check our products? Yeah. So like I said before, I microbeads was the issue. That was the first thing about this. And micro Bead is kind of microplastic product. Uh, in it's a very, very tiny of uh, of products, and it has a very specific function. So it, you will find most of your toothpaste or your scrubs because the function of scrubbing and like cleaning, and their shape is something very specific. So there are small spherical that are used uh, uh, in, in scrubs and toothpaste. While microplastics can be ranging from anything to everything. They can be in any form in your products. And there's so much more. For recent lists, uh, we accumulated the uh, UNEP and uh, European's Chemical Agency. And, uh, and we have over 500 uh, microplastic ingredients on our red list. Um, so that's mm -hmm. insane. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, and so UK has so, only stands microbeads, mm -hmm. not microplastics. Okay, so microbeads, just to make sure everyone gets it, they're for kind of exfoliating and scrubbing, yeah. like in toothbrushes and things like that. But mm -hmm. microplastics are still a huge problem. So yeah. if people are worried, what can they look for on products, and how can they kind of 
distinguish. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's why it's a uh, it's so complicated because as there are more than five hundred, and I on this yeah. almost the entire week, and I cannot. Do it. So that's why we came called Beat the Microbeat app, and with that app you can scan ingredients listed on your product, and the app scans the ingredients, reads it for my classics, and that's for now the fastest way to know if your products can plastic okay okay and how can people get that app it's called beat the micro beat is it the mic it's available for free okay yeah that sounds great okay and is there a logo that some brands have on their products as well that people can look for yeah so as a as plastic soup foundation we're very solution oriented so we want to the problem very there we want of the issue but at the same time we want a tool or at least an action that they can do to to deal with it so um we, we have be the microbeat app and also certified brand do not contain any plastic we go through their product list product and we certify mm -hmm. they do not use closing and that certification is called zero um okay in the uk we have such great for example, Neil's Yard Remedies. That's uh, mm -hmm. one of our uh, in the UK and Beauty Kitchen and the. Mm -hmm. so there are so many options out there. This is not something mm -hmm. uh, that you have to really use. There are brands out there that mm -hmm. you can choose that do not and use these ingredients. Okay, so you've kind of done the hard work for us with the zero plastic <laughs> inside logo. So we. Can... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They are available um, in our app. Can also go to our website to okay yeah and why do, why are these microplastics added to products what are kind of the benefits for the manufacturers why are they still using them well i would mostly it's a, as a deep filler so uh, mm -hmm. the, your products is filled with plastic for example we also work with scientists and we were curious about this particular aging cream for women so we tested it and we found out that the 50 milliliter bottle contained over 1 million particles 1 million in 150 ml and that's just you're unbelievable putting, yeah you're just putting on your face hiding those wrinkles filling it with plastic and saying uh, how much uh, there was and that's one product that so imagine Testing yeah. uh, others, but the the function where but sometimes it's an emulsifying factor. Yeah, sometimes it's used to make products waterproof. For example, okay. your para when you uh -huh. buy rain doesn't yeah. go away. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. And do they have impacts on our health as well, or is it just an environmental issue? Yeah. That's something we're starting to focus more and more in the past years because it's very close to the body, especially our cosmetics and care products. And uh, for example, if I use my lipstick, plastic and eating, uh, mm. it goes inside me. Because that's just lipsticks work. Uh, so there are uh, evidence indicating that they can be harmful for health. So for example, a lot of plastic and plasticizers are linked with uh, the our fertility cycles. They show some evidence of delayed neurodevelopment in children and immune disorders. Uh, and there are some studies which show a higher risk of hormone related cancer. So these are just the initial, uh, uh, but the indications are. We definitely need more research on it. But enough to to be alarmed by it uh -huh. a few people are commenting and saying we're breaking up a little bit so hopefully people oh. can hear us you were saying about um the microplastics health impacts affecting fertility and yeah children's development as well that's mm -hmm. right isn't it yeah okay hopefully everybody can hear us now if you can't then please comment and let us know
Um, so what kind of environmental impacts do they have further down the line? So say that you've showered with a product or mm -hmm. you've warmed a product and it goes down the drain, then what happens? Yeah. So there are so many studies that show this is just a deniable fact at this point. So many marine species are in jobs, but also like plankton. There are three planktons that are ingesting microplastics. So it's all over in our food. Every marine animal has ingested a plankton at some point. And that's very dangerous because it can also impact their health on a, a you know, hormonal level. But at the same time, uh, you know, they feel full, but there is no nutrition. So a lot of sea okay. will die because of that. So, yeah, it's, okay. it has a real impact on our food. Okay. I think we're still breaking up a little bit, but let's carry on and hope for the best. So you were saying that um, they can ingest a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, so someone said it's your sound. There's not much we yeah. can do about it, do you think? So, oh, someone says they're bringing another phone to yeah. you. I'm, I'm gonna try to move. Uh... Okay. Did anybody else have any more questions whilst we're waiting? Hopefully um, we can get the sound working a little bit better. Hi Ella. Hi everybody. We're just trying to figure out some sound problems and hopefully we'll be back any second now. So we're a problem for our environment. They're also a huge problem for our health. Um, so there's some new research which is suggesting that if we're ingesting they can affect the affect things like your hormones, children's development, and then equally for marine life. She was explaining how often if they've ingested them, they can feel like they're full and then perhaps they're not. Um, so Katie has just asked, what's the best way to dispose of products that include microbeads? That is a question on my list. So hopefully, I've just had a request. Hopefully we'll be back up and running and the sign, the sound will be a bit better this time. And she's just rejoining us. Fingers crossed, everybody. Oh. Hello. Hi. Hopefully, um, yeah. That sounds a bit better. Hopefully, yeah. it's going to work. Yeah. Um, a couple of people have asked one of the questions that we'd also hope to cover, which is: say somebody's already got product with microplastics, what's the best way for them to dispose of it? Is there a way that they can do that safely? Yeah, that's a difficult one. I think because unfortunately we don't think there's a proper way to dispose of them. So mm -hmm. either if you use it, you're, uh, it's gonna go to the environment and the environment through your mm -hmm. drains. Uh, other option we uh, is that you just throw it in and it will either end up in landfill or get burnt mm -hmm. in some incineration uh, uh, facility, which is also not good for the environment. Uh, what we try to tell people to make a statement about. And they should, uh, we, we suggest that if people can send their products back to the producers and brands and let them know why they don't want to use this uh, product, that, that, that's something that you can make statement with and you can let them. Of course, it all comes okay. down to, to demand and supply. If the people don't have plastic in their products, the producers will stop. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's a brilliant suggestion because I think this is something that I've spoken to people about before who have still yeah. had it and I've, I haven't really known what the answer is but to send it back that you know you can speak with where you spend your money and actions that you make to, to um, brands yeah. that's a great idea um, are there any microplastic free products or brands that you'd particularly recommend for people especially in the UK yeah I like your remedy I think except for their packaging that's very cool I think very and the, yeah and they don't use any microplastics so it's okay. all for good just products that don't have microplastics then to yeah. So, yeah. Okay. 
You broke up slightly again. So that was Neil's Yard Remedies, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 Okay. There's a, a real delay. So maybe we will finish yeah, soon. Gonna... In... I'm going to. Are you back with us? Oh. Okay. I think we're going to try one more time. Uh, I'm just going to add her. Hi, everybody who's joining. Thank you for bearing with us. Um, it's a really fascinating topic, microplastics. Um, and their campaign is brilliant. Yeah. So hopefully. I works. have a different phone now, so I hope it works better. <laughs> you sound clearer. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe you could just run quickly through what you were saying about um, mm -hmm. the issue of microplastics plastics because a lot more people have joined now and the sound sounds much clearer um yeah. to kind of the environmental and the health problems related to them and what people can do um so can, can, sorry can you say that again um if you you were talking about the environmental and the health impacts of microplastics um just for everybody who couldn't hear before maybe you could talk again about about what they are and what people can yeah. do so yeah, as I uh, mentioned before, microplastics are very difficult to deal with once they enter the environment. So they're because they're impossible to clean because of their size. Um, a lot of mar marine animals ingest them and it's not good for their health and it's all over in our uh, uh, food chain. So that's something very pressing issue for the environment. And for our health, there are definitely indications related to fertility disease and neurodevelopment uh, uh, in children uh, that, that can be a pressing issue for us uh, in the coming years. So it's very important for us to know right now what and uh, what impact they can have on us. So as Plastic Zoo Foundation and as Beat the Microbead, we uh, suggest to use brands that don't uh, use microplastic ingredients in their uh, products. So if you go onto our uh, app and our website, you'll find a whole list of uh, brands that we have certified ourselves that they can use that do not have microplastics in them. Um, if you have already products at home that contain microplastics, uh, the easiest way would be to just throw them in the bin and that way they won't end up in the ocean. That's also not the most environmentally friendly option, but uh, at the same time, uh, they won't end up in the ocean. At least that where the, the pollution is almost impossible to clean. Um, and what we suggest to make a statement out of it is to really send the products back to the producers and brands and let them know this is the reason why we don't want to use your products because use microplastics in them. And uh, at the end of the day, as consumers, we have a lot of power to uh, kind of uh, drive the changes in, in brands and producers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody's leaving lots of lovely comments now, so I think they can hear you perfectly. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So it, what are a couple of small things that people could start doing in their daily lives to cut down their plastic and microplastic use? You mentioned your um, app, which sounds great. Is there anything else like simple things that people could do to start building on their lifestyle? So so we have be the microbeat app, but we have also another app called My Little Plastic Footprint app. And that's uh, more related to a plastic-free lifestyle. So it's an amazing app where, in which you can get a lot of tips on how to reduce plastic in everyday life. So what we did there is that we divided our lives in like six sections. So in your garden, in your bathroom, in your kitchen. And uh, you can get a lot of uh, uh, related tips uh, in there to see how you can reduce and what kind of plastics are actually all over you because sometimes people don't even realize that their curtains or their carpets are made of plastic and when you really think and you look around there's so much plastic in our lives and mm -hmm. for the most of it there are alternatives available so that's something that uh, can be very useful for people as well and yeah, yeah. Okay. When you mention curtains, they can be in your clothes as well, can't they? So yes. do you recommend people use like a, a wash bag to trap those as well, the microplastics in those? Yeah, well, I think the, we really can recommend uh, this filter for your washing machine that you can use. It's mm -hmm. from uh, Planet Care. 
on Instagram, you can find them Planet Care Solutions. I think that's their uh, tag. And there you can find a filter that you can put in your washing machine that catches all the fibers. And then you can just catch it at there at that point. And then that way it won't go all the way to waste treatment plants and to the environment again is the same logic. So yeah, and better would be to just uh, have uh, clothes that are organic and are not synthetic made. So okay. yeah. Uh -huh. Somebody's comment and said, how do you do this personally? You know, like, is there no plastic in your bathroom? Like what? I think maybe it's about taking small steps and doing what you can personally do. But maybe you could say a bit about what you do in your personal life. Well, I have definitely tried to put more and more attention with products that I've been using. So I'm trying to buy only brands, like zero brands. I know all of them now. So it's a big range of, <laughs> there are more than 70 of them. So it's absolutely, you can find okay. any products you want, uh, which is not plastic free. But other than that, there are some things that are easier than others. Uh, so yeah, as you said, it's step by step. And sometimes uh, ecological and uh, alternatives are not that financially friendly, let's say. Mm -hmm. So it's also a thing of how much you can afford. And it's really about what little things you can do. And yeah, and I try to do the basics, like not have plastic bottles and not have uh, plastic bags with me when I go to the supermarket and saying no to straws. Uh, these are very easy things that if all of us start to doing it at the same time, it would have a really large impact. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think often people don't know where to start, but if all of us did one small thing, that will make yeah. a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to add about the campaign as well before we finish? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, we also have a petition that we are running against okay. microplastics um, uh -huh. in cosmetics. So if people want to sign that, that will be very helpful for us. And that petition we can actually take to politicians and uh, that would make a real difference in, in policy level. Okay. And is that for the, the petition, is that for the UK or all of the EU? Yeah, all of the EU. Well, okay. now with, new, with the Brexit, I don't yeah. know if it would apply. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully for all of us. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay great thank you oh someone has just commented and asked do microplastics degrade so no but maybe you could just explain yeah. so, what happens well plastic we it doesn't degrade because none of the human beings have lived long enough to see it degrade let's put it like that um so yeah uh, microplastics just become smaller and smaller in if they're in environment because there are so many factors that break them down like sunlight or uh, if it, if they're in the ocean then the currents uh, so they just become smaller and smaller and also become nanoplastics so yeah I would say plastics do not degrade yeah okay yeah. great I think that was brilliant that was everything that I thought we should discuss. Um, thank you very much for talking to us today, unless there's anything else you want to add. But I think everyone should go and download your app today. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you for having us over here. It's That's very okay. lovely. Right. Thank you. <laughs> lovely to speak to you. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. Hi. Bye, everybody. We'll be talking again at six o'clock. And that'll be our final talk today for World Oceans Day. And we'll have another one again on Thursday. Right. Bye.